and welcome to What's Up Kansas City and today we are at the beautiful campus of the what I call Penn Valley but I think they've changed the name since then but it's a very nice looking campus we have a very great view this morning and we're very blessed to be alive on God's green earth it's a little chilly out there but it is what it is and I'm glad to be here on the campus visiting Dr. Joe Seabrook. Is that right? That's exactly right. Good morning. And why don't you correct my language about where we are today? We are at the one and only Metropolitan Community College Penn Valley campus. Thank you very much. You know, I'm old school. I go back to where it was that's on, all right. on 39th Street. Okay. You know, I, yeah, that's where I remember it from. That's Fantastic. And so, how long have you been here at the school? So, uh, I've been a proud uh, member of this particular campus for two years now. For two years? Came back in December of 2010. Okay, then. Well, why don't you tell our listening audience a little bit, a little short bio on Dr. Seabrook? Well, I'll, I'll be brief. Okay. Uh, I, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and I came to Kansas City, actually, uh, to attend the University of Missouri, Kansas City, uh, on an athletic scholarship. Uh, Kansas City was one of uh, seven institutions I was looking at. Uh, being from Atlanta, I wanted to be in an urban environment, and, mm -hmm. and instantly, uh, Kansas City was a match for me. Uh, UMKC was a was a great match for me, and being able to play in the historical um, municipal auditorium, where uh, more Final Fours have been played there than anywhere else on the planet, uh, really attracted me. And during my time at UMKC, I had the privilege of uh, earning a bachelor's degree in psychology. Uh, a master's degree in educational specialist degree, both in higher education and administration, and then an interdisciplinary doctorate, uh, PhD in urban leadership and policy studies and educational administration. So UMKC uh, is, has absolutely been so good to me, so has Kansas City. Uh, during my undergraduate years, uh, um, like most uh, 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 Kansas City leaders who went to UMKC, uh, was a, a very active in the African American Student Union, uh, I, uh, where I really learned to cut my teeth on dealing with difficult issues. Back then, the issue for us was apartheid and, and divesting uh, uh, from Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, had about four or five administrative roles. I started in fundraising um, uh, and uh, went on to student affairs, where I worked as the director of multicultural student affairs, mm -hmm. uh, and was a part of the original team that created the, uh, the uh, Deputy Chancellor for Diversity at UMKC was Dr. Karen Dace, who, who if you have not interviewed her, she would be great uh, to, to do so, because uh, she's taken that off to a whole new heights. And then left uh, Kansas City for a brief moment uh, to go down to the booming metropolis of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Know right where it is. You know, you do, that's right. Uh, yeah. And had a chance to work uh, in student affairs uh, there at that institution came back to Kansas City in 2007, where I served the, uh, the Blue River campus in our district metropolitan community, uh, college Blue River campus, mm -hmm. and uh, was asked to come on over here for a little bit, and uh, took it like a fish to water, and been here ever since. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to meet Mandela. Was that right? In Pretoria at the, at the Capitol. Fantastic. Went to a reception. My cousin and I, we were there in, uh, in uh, Joburg, Johannesburg, and Pretoria, and Fantastic. And by the way, all of that area over there was a very nice experience. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we didn't take any pictures because they asked us not to take any pictures because of the limestone in his eyes. So we weren't able to document it. So, you know, documentation is better than presentation, right? That's, up, that's what they say. But but we abided by the rules. Now, some of your, your cousins, they just didn't understand the rules. Right. Because, no, they understood it. Yeah, they yeah. just wanted, you know, they just thought it was yeah. going to be, you they, know, like they going to the jungle. And they wanted to make sure to bring an artifact back, artifact back, but, That's right. but, but you bring it back in your heart. That's exactly right. Talks about it in Proverbs 4.23, keep all diligence in your heart. In your heart. In yes, your sir. heart, so that's where, that's where it's at. Listen, um, uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Well, I, um, um, my current family, I have a lovely bride, uh, Leslie, the love of my life. We've been married 12 years. Okay. Uh, she has given me the greatest gift that one can give another, and that's my two sons. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph C. Brooks III, who we affectionately call Joe Trey, uh, right. and uh, he is uh, eight years old. Um, he is, has mixed emotions about school. He's a third grader, but we're working on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my baby is uh, four years old. His name is Jackson James, uh, and he's one of these people. Once you meet, you will never forget him. Okay. Uh, like the meeting one. Yeah, day. yeah. You, you will not. He has a presence at four years old. Okay. And so. Um, uh, 
Um, I'm very, I feel very blessed and pleased to be in a place like Kansas City to raise uh, uh, my family. Uh, being from Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, it's not the community I grew up in. And I know a lot of folks uh, right. really see Atlanta as the, the black mm -hmm. mecca. And some of that is true, but when it comes to doing right by your kids or right by your family, mm -hmm. uh, there's, some, there, there's some problematic issues mm -hmm. being in the community that's really um, gravitates to you know what's new, what's hot, what's what's uh, superficial, and so for me, Kansas City um, uh, is, is such a tight knit community, um, and uh, I feel that uh, since I've been here, I've been treated like one of Kansas City's sons, and so I, I feel indebted uh, to uh, make sure that uh, the work that we do here at Penn Valley uh, create leaders uh, who can. Uh, benefit for future generations. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, and, and one of the things, I, I, I'm not quite sure what you want to cover today, but, but one of the things that's been heavy on my heart mm -hmm. is this whole notion of education and how we have allowed, uh, in our language, we've passed down to today's generation this whole notion that education is a way, is a way for gains from employment. And, and what, what we have confused the issue is, is, is education really is a place uh, where you become enlightened, uh, become aware of who you are within the context of your history and your culture, and as a byproduct of knowing who you are uh, and where you stand uh, in your culture, a good job is a byproduct. Right. It's not the it's not the goal. It's the byproduct of you being a healthy, holistic person who knows how to navigate your community, but others that are unfamiliar to you. And so I, I hope that one of the things I love to do is start a campaign. Well, really clarifying what it means uh, uh, to, to, to go to college. Uh, so many folks treat uh, this wonderful institution uh, and wonderful youth institutions like it, almost like trade schools, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to trade, go to trade school. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you go get a career technical um, uh, certificate and go to work, but, it, but don't use um, uh, the, the, the opportunities you have to sit in a liberal arts environment and not soak that in uh, to figure out how that context will fit for you and for the rest of your life. And uh, uh, again, that's been heavy on my heart because folks, particularly our younger generation, they want to come in, get it quick, and get out. Mm -hmm. But maturation is something that doesn't, I mean, you can't get that quickly. That's experience. That's not um, um, grades and numbers on a transcript. That's right. And so we, we need to encourage our young people to, you know, you know, put the cell phone down a little bit, put the iPod down a little bit, and engage with folks because this is a once in a lifetime experience. Um, good instruction brings good production. Absolutely, but good instruction teaches you how to teach yourself. Well, that's, but if you learn how to teach yourself, you can have production. That's right. I agree. And that's the most graceful thing you can have in a life, and a man or a woman can have is to be productive. Be productive. Be pro you know what, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I, I've tried to come up with some, uh, you know, uh, one thing I wanted to agree with you on is that, um, uh, and I've told my kids that same thing, that going to school does not guarantee you make a lot of money, but it guarantees you that, you be, that your intellectual capabilities will be challenged. Absolutely, you know, and, and develop. And develop, because you got to uh, say something before your peers, something out of your head that you wrote, and it's up to you how you go going to look. Right, and it's, your, <laughs> and it's your choice. It's your choice. And so you shouldn't be uh, begging your instructor, your professor, to give you the blueprint of how to do your assignment. Right. You know, it's, your, it's your up to your interpretation to put your own spin on it. That's absolutely right. right. Uh, came up with this, careful investment for maximum results. Okay. Careful investment for maximum results, okay? If it's true that we are mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit, how are you creating balance to the Kansas City community with your education tool, and more so black folks? Well, now let, now let me be very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, as you talk about creating balance for folks mm -hmm. to figure out how they're going to navigate the world, mm -hmm. that's not something we can do for you. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do, we, we are very uh, intentional in trying to create a space and opportunities mm -hmm. for you to get exposure and experiences mm -hmm. to help you figure out how to determine that balance for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, uh, we all know that some folks don't take, you know, 
direction and instruction well. Some folks like to figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to do it the hard way. But it's the hard it's the it's it's the hard times and it's the mistakes and the challenges that really help us grow. That's absolutely right. See, we, we have a saying around here, you know, without no challenge, there's no growth. Right. And so uh, so this, so folks don't necessarily like the assignments that they're given. They don't necessarily like how this the syllabi has been presented to them. But again, that's a challenge. An opportunity for when you figure out how to navigate that, you grow at the end. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of our institutions, and I won't name them, uh, have made education too easy. Mm -hmm. But again, without challenge, there's no growth. Mm -hmm. What's the point of spending thousands of dollars for you to be the same person you were when you started? Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. That's mm -hmm. not a good investment. Mm -hmm. And so, again, you may not agree with the curriculum. You may not agree uh, with our approach and pedagogy. But at the end of the day, our expectation is that you would be a, a much enlightened, enriched, prepared, more prepared individual than when you came. And 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 regardless of if you're 18 or 81, mm -hmm. that's our expectation mm -hmm. for you. But I have to say, Kansas City, we have to be a little bit open to these experiences because we have a lot of folks who come here who say, you know, I don't need what you have an offer. I just need you to validate what I know. And that's great for you as an individual, but education is a collective experience. Mm -hmm. And so you bringing what you know to the table is exciting and awesome for us because there's a lot of people that don't have your background and experience who need to learn from you. And if you don't engage, if you just want to get yours and run, uh, that's problematic because you know, we have 6,642 beautiful minds at this institution. And, and my expectation is for all of them to be challenged and grow. And the best challenge happens peer to peer, not necessarily instructor to the student. Well, you know, uh, they, uh, someone once told me, said, don't, don't cry about the challenge, get more skill set. Yeah, I mean, that's it. And that's get more skill set, and the challenges don't really, they're just an obstacle. And, 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 and what you're saying, again, another fallacy, another misnomer that we give our young people is this whole notion that you can actually get and obtain an education. And I know that may sound strange to you, but listen to me. We will never, ever, ever be fully educated. I spent 24 of my 41 years in a formal educational environment, mm -hmm. and yet I have so much to learn. Mm -hmm. That holds true for all of us. So what a degree does for you is give you the framework on how to go educate yourself for the rest of your days and teach others how to learn. So l let me go over this again. Careful investment for maximum results. Yes, sir. So that's part of what you're saying. I'm saying your investment in yourself. Okay. Helping you uh, be able to, to learn and uh, think objectively, uh, analytically, to help solve problems, not just for you, but for your community. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the investment you make, the investment we make, because what people also have to understand, uh, you may not like the cost uh, of higher education. You may say the 92 credit hours that you pay here is too much, but it's, that $92 is subsidized. Mm -hmm. You know, it costs uh, uh, really about $300 to educate mm -hmm. a student per credit hour. Mm -hmm. but your state subsidizes you, depending on where you live. Your county subsidizes mm -hmm. you. Uh, and, and the fundraising that we do uh, also subsidizes your education. So um, um, in many ways, you're getting a break. And so your investment uh, should generate a return for you being able to be. So, so, so we're talking about the mind, body, heart, soul, soul, and spirit. Right. So we're talking about the whole person. Right. So how do, how do we make that person better when they leave here? And again, let me, let me put emphasis on, we can't make you better. Mm -hmm. We create a space for you to choose to have experiences so to you make to, you better. So you got the resources. You have the resources, but you got to, it's just like this. You know, you, you know it's a smorgasbord, it's a buffet, mm -hmm. but you got to come in. But listen, to do it right, you got to get a plate. And sometimes that plate is in the form of books. Mm -hmm. uh, in the form of uh, uh, learning how to manipulate technology, uh, you got to have a fork, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and 
and uh, sometimes that force is in the in the uh, 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 it looks like you know you you being able to work in groups, you being able to do presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, then depending on what what you like, if you like state, you probably want a state night. Mm -hmm. But if you want a state night, then that takes a little bit extra. So you might want to learn how to manipulate the materials in our laboratories mm -hmm. and our computer labs. And so it's up to you. Now, some people like dessert, ice cream. You might need a spoon. If you want a spoon, well, that means you might need to understand how to work with folks who are not from your neighborhood, mm -hmm. who are not from your state, not even from your country. country yeah. And so you have to, and all of that exists. We have, a, we have over 250 international students. Mm -hmm. And so at any given point in time, you can experience Africa, South America, Europe, right here at 3201 Southwest Traffic Way. Mm -hmm. Now, so so we're getting we're getting around about to the mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. Right. The connecting the whole body. Now, um, uh, keep in mind that in some sense our community is still operating with the mindset of the industrial age, and uh, the carrot and the stick. You know, do something good, you get the carrot. Do something bad, you get the stick. That's right. And um, um, and Carlos and I, he was talking to a guy yesterday about uh, the industrialization mindset, and we're moving on into another another era in our life. So, what do you think about that? Well, I, you know, I think some of those. I mean, because, because before you say anything, because because some of our our social behavior, at least in Kansas City. It's still reflective on the industrial age, you know, like people consume a lot of food and stuff, but we ain't working like we used to. The kids are consume a lot of food, but they're not outside playing like they used to. They're not burning it up. That's the old way. So what's the freshness of this program that you have here that is more towards this millennium that we're in right now? You know, it, it, does it, that make sense? It does, it does. But what's hard, what's hard for that is, you know, some religious institutions, uh, some private institutions mm -hmm. have a very specific program. So when you come in, you, you, no matter how you are, in four or five years, when you leave, you're going to be this way. Right, right. Well, because we are Kansas City's community college, right. um, I, I think the diversity of who we are and how people need to function to be successful has a wider range. And so, if you're if you come in here and say that you want um, um, to have the discipline to, to be an engineer, for example, mm -hmm. versus a, a person who just wants to to get a couple credits um, as they transfer to the school of their choice, I mean, you can get as much as you want and leave as much as you want on the table. Now, I personally feel it's our responsibility, to some degree to help shape and mold and impact how you see the world. The mindset. Right. But it's not our goal and responsibility to tell you no, what your mindset no, should be. No, but you can set the tone. And the, and the tone is is rigor, and the tone is be open to new concepts and ideas that are mm -hmm. foreign to you. Mm -hmm. uh, learn how to speak your mind uh, in a controlled, With intelligence. Uh, intelligent way. But learn how to listen to others, even if you vehemently disagree. And what I see, the, using the example of the industrialized mindset, that's the biggest part of that piece, is that we don't, we've been told the rules, the rules are 40, 50 years old now, and we can't change from the rules. But in this new technological age, in this new entrepreneurial spirit age, right. uh, you have to be able to be more flexible. The rules change depending on the circumstance. Right. And, and if you, and depending on what circumstance you want to be in, right. you need to understand those rules. Right. Uh, that's the basic framework. We like any education, right. any quality education offers you. But, but, we, but we can't, we're not going to dictate uh, to you how you should think, feel, and operate. We, we create a space that all those ideas and concepts make our classrooms uh, so much richer because, you know, our folks from all walks of life, and we got folks who are, who are fresh out of high school, fresh out of the pen, and fresh out of retirement looking for a third career. Mm -hmm. And and you no place in this region, I promise you, you will not have the, the mix of experiences all coming for the common purpose. And so our educational experience because of the inclusiveness 
um, and diversity that we have is unmatched. I mean, you can be sitting in a classroom uh, with someone who is is 40 years your senior or or um, 20 years your junior. One of the things I'm also a part of, I got to brag, because I know our Kansas Missouri School District doesn't always get positive press, mm -hmm. but we got about 34 young men and women uh, who are here who are a part of our early college program, which basically means that uh, they, they are... They have a home high school, right? but they're here most of the time. And we have 12 of those young folks who are going to be graduating with their high school diploma and their associate's degree within three weeks of each other. Uh, and these are some of the sharpest kids you will ever meet, mm -hmm. uh, ranging from Southwest uh, Early College Academy to Lincoln to East High School. Um, and so, again... And they go to school here. They go to school here. But it's the mindset. It's the mindset. And you get, you get, you get people into a different mindset because uh, uh, I would say there are really no bad people. You know, we just make bad choices. And do bad things. And do bad things. But I think most of our kids are looking for opportunities right. and a way to improve their life and not be in the industrialized age. Right. Okay. And, and, I, and I can say that you have a good program here. I have a good friend. She graduated from here. Oh, great. She's in the Block School of Business. She's one of um, um, Block Personal Scholars. Okay, fantastic. So you know, I'm not I'm not an advocate against the institution, but I am an advocate to see us do better as a people in our right. community, and uh, and uh, so that we can move forward and not move on. That's right. Let me ask you this: uh, um, um, How do your programs connect, and how do they reflect our business community? Because well, because because. It doesn't do any good, and don't take this wrong, it doesn't do any good to teach somebody something on a typewriter when the business community is going to have computers and all that kind of stuff like that, and maybe just you might go to work for them, they might just give you a smartphone to you to take care of your business. Well, so, so do you have a relationship with the business community and try to feed them? Go ahead. So, so let me answer that question, and I'm sorry I just can't say yes or no, because it, it, you don't it's, have always, to. it's always, it depends. Now, we have... Uh, a core programs that we call career technical education programs. Mm -hmm. And those are programs like nursing, um, 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 got paramedics, a, got paramedics. Got a nursing program. Yeah, paramedics. Um, we have um, dental assisting. Um, we have um, um, criminal justice. And those programs, like th that is a career and technical certificate, are absolutely revolve around what the industry standards are. Mm -hmm. So if we were to leave here right now and go a couple blocks uh, south to the Health Science Institute. Beautiful place. Beautiful place, but it's not just a beautiful place. It's not just aesthetically beautiful. Mm -hmm. All of that equipment, all of that technology, in many cases uh, are as good or ahead of what a lot of our healthcare uh, uh, facilities uh, have. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's the hospitals, it's the clinics, um, that, that gave us the feedback on what type of equipment that we need to train students on mm -hmm. in that category. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in many cases, you, you are absolutely uh, prepared. Now, quickly, on the, on the liberal arts side, on the transfer side, we're just like any other uh, uh, institution of higher education, you mm -hmm. know, with the fundamental core liberal arts education, mm -hmm. does not necessarily align with the, the specific mechanics of expectations in this industry, but teaching you how to think teaching you how to uh, 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 analyze data and, and be uh, critical in your thought process is the primary goal of that curriculum. Okay, now uh, the technical program that you talked about, do you guys collaborate with the Kansas City School District? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, as much as we can. Uh, what, is, only, what does that mean, Doc, as much as you can? Well, at the end of the day, we all have different masters for which we serve. The Kansas City Missouri School District. <laughs> They serve uh, the Desi Department of Education, Secondary Education, and right now, you know, they're working through uh, to 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 build their accreditation standards, and um, we do a very good job of helping students have access to this college school already. Um, in fact, we we've, we've been talking about partnerships and how to 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 to, to test them earlier mm -hmm. on our compass entry exam, so they have a better sense of where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the early college program, which I talked to you about earlier, really helps the best and brightest not feel 
uh, restricted by you know, a high school curriculum. They're ready for college. Mm -hmm. And so um, we also are working on an um, uh, uh, accelerated um, health science academy uh, to help students get their certified nursing assistant certificate uh, so they can get the work and support themselves and their families while they go to school. And so uh, Dr. Green has been a, a, a phenomenal asset uh, to working with those young people. And I've, I've yet to be the person who uh, cares more about students uh, than he. Yeah, I had a chance to, uh, actually it was a job opportunity. I didn't get it at the uh, health science. Okay. It was for the kids coming there after school. They knew yeah. they were chaperone, but they, they chose not to choose me. Is that right? And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but, okay. But I had a chance. I was very enlightened. You know what? I almost got freaked out one time because there was, wasn't nobody there. They got these dummies almost look like people, man. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, like, because you walk down the hallway and you look into a room and there's somebody look almost like a human. And that's, and that's something that we... I mean, that's a nice... It's a simulation lab. And so those are, yeah. those are simulators that, man, they can create any kind of experience that you will have. Right. Whether it's in a, in a, in a birthing situation or in an mm -hmm. emergency situation. And again, and that's critical because as hospitals and other clinics have to reduce the number of clinical sites that right. they offer students. Right. Uh, they can practice on these dummies and if, and if something uh, goes wrong, there's no life... Right uh, on the line, but yeah, we we have one of the best um, assimilation yeah. um, 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 centers in the nation. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty. You know what? Uh, I like to come back and visit with you a little bit more one on one. So, because I'm, I'm I want to talk to you about uh, uh, the African American community and and uh, you know I how, love that. How do we connect it, uh, uh, the ed this educational vehicle to them? Because a lot of people don't realize you can come here and get get your dirty two here. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. And then you go on to MKC, and that's what we did in the case of my friend. We, so so, she, so she, she did two here, and then she went to. So what I will say, we are connected to the black community, yeah. but we can be connected better. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Better and much more efficiently. Yes, sir into the new millennium. That's right. Not the industrial age. That's right. And not the industrial mindset. You know, it's been a great pleasure. Pleasure today. been all mine. Sir. Yeah, and I like to get the, I'll get your card and so that we can have some dialogue in in the future. I would love that. And it's been a real pleasure being here with you this this morning at the campus of what? Say that again. The one and only Metropolitan Community College. And where are you located? Penn Valley. Penn Valley, and how do you find Penn Valley? Can't miss it. We're uh, here in Midtown, 3201 Southwest Traffic Way. And come visit me. I'm in Campus Center Suite 500. Okay, and how many other campuses are associated with this? There's one? five magnificent campuses. And uh, tell the folks what, about those right quick. Uh, Blue River is uh, in Independence, Missouri. Uh, and uh, Maple Woods is in the Northland. <coughs> and um, uh, Longview is out in Lee Summit. And the business and technology campus is off of Front Street uh, in the industrial area in town. And uh, I will tell you, uh, when it comes to helping people figure out where they want to be in life without getting too deep in their pockets, uh, we have inch for inch, pound for pound. We are as good, if not better, than any institution you will, you will ever come in contact with. You know, Doc, it's been a plum pleasing pleasure yes, sir. being with you today. That's from down your way, the plot, please and pleasure. Please, please. That's <laughs> and, right. And, 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 you know, I've enjoyed it, and it was nice meeting you. I've met you before on, on the, on the, on the yes, run. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I think you had some very powerful words to talk to our audience about. And uh, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, we are raising our bar at Cascade Media, and, and this is the type of interviews that we do here. You know, very intellectual high class, high performance interviews, and uh, we're just trying to make it better for our community. We're trying to bring the information into this new era that we're in. We're out of, uh, and we want to get out of the Fred Flintstone era and moving forward. So we, we, we want you guys to support us. Um, uh, send Carlos Nelson a, a little note sometime on our blog, although he doesn't like to get any accolades, but he is the tireless worker behind uh, Cascade Media. I'm just an humble servant to Cascade Media. And my name is Jim Watts. And I was taught this a long time ago when I was a little guy in Cub Scouts. And I said it over and over again. I hope some of you young folks will take this up. 
To look sharp is to be sharp. And what's up, Kansas City? Thank you very much.